Hey everybody, this is Games Plus James, and welcome back to another Unity Game Essentials video. And in this video, we're going to take a look at a couple of simple things. We're going to look at how to add an extra menu to your pause screen, for example, to use for, say, an options menu. And we're also going to look at how to make sure that your pause menu and your UI will look good uh, no matter what monitor people are working with. So monitors of different sizes and shapes, we want to allow for that in your pause menu. So we'll start off by going to our pause menu uh, that we've created in a previous video or whatever pause menu you may have in your game and we'll turn on this pause screen here so we have this activated I've got two buttons one to resume the game one to go to our main menu and what we'll do is basically create a duplicate of this to use as a options screen so we'll just duplicate the one we already have change this to be options screen like so uh, I'm just going to deactivate the other pause screen for now. And then we're going to lay, uh, well not just lay out, but we're going to first of all delete one of those buttons. And we're going to get this other main menu button that we already have. And I'm going to pull this down here and pull it over to the side. And we're going to say that this will be, we'll call this our cancel changes button. Because generally speaking, if you have some options, when players want to and make any changes in their game, you will always want to give them the option to reset back to whatever changes they already had, just in case they accidentally mess things up. So I'm just going to change the text on this to say cancel changes. Then we'll duplicate this button and I'll drag it over here like this. And we'll change this one to say apply changes. And we'll just change the name of this to be apply changes just so we know what we're doing when we're navigating through the inspector and for now this is effectively all we need to have some options in a further video we'll look at adding some display options to our game such as resolution changes and toggling whether it's full screen or windowed um, and we'll also look at how to uh, handle sound effects so we will be doing that in an upcoming episode but we want to keep it Nice and simple to just to set up in this episode. So at the moment, obviously, when you go and pause the game, we get our pause screen. Not very, not anything too crazy going on there, but we need to be able to get to our options screen. So uh, in order to get to our options screen, we're obviously going to need another button to do that. So what we'll do is take our main menu button that we already have, which is our return to main here, and I'm going to duplicate that. And basically just change it so that this bottom one now becomes our return to main and this top one will be uh, we'll say open options we'll call it and on the text we'll say just say options so now we we have those in place and um, we need to add some code to make them actually happen so we already have a menu controller script set up so I'm going to open that up here. We've got a bunch of functions just to resume the game and return to the main menu because that's basically all we've put in place. And what we'll do is say public void. We want an, uh, a function to open the options. So we'll have public void, um, say activate options like so. So we open and close our curly brackets and then when we're in the options menu we need to be able to get out of the options menu by either cancelling the changes or applying any changes we make so we'll have a public void apply changes and a public void cancel changes now when, whether we apply our changes or cancel our changes, there's one consistent thing that will happen with both of those, which is no matter whether we're cancelling or applying our changes, we will be going back to the main menu. So we'll have our options screen will be open and then we'll close out of that and we'll go back to our pause screen. So basically we know we'll be doing the exact same code for both of those. So what we'll do is add another function that we'll call public void return to pause screen and then within the apply changes and the cancel changes functions we're going to add in here return to pause screen 
like so. And of course, we'll actually need to do some code in here to, to do that. So, to control our options screen appearing and disappearing, we'll obviously need a reference to the options screen. So, we'll go back up to where our references are up here and we'll create a public game object that we'll call options screen or options menu actually there we go so then what we'll do is whenever we want to activate the options so we know we're on our main pause screen and we want to go into our options menu well then we go uh, options menu dot set active true and go and of course at the same time when we turn on the options we want to make sure that our pause menu disappears so we'll say uh, pause menu dot set active is false so conversely that's what we do when we want to open the options menu so when we want to close the option menu we want to do the exact opposite so we say options menu we want to say set active is false so it's no longer active and our pause menu we want that to be reactivated so pause menu dot set active true okay nice and simple so we just let that compile there and we'll apply these uh, functions to the buttons we just created so on our open options here instead of being returned to main we'll have that be uh, where's our Activate options. There we go. I couldn't remember the name of the function we called. Um, and then on our option screen for cancel changes, we want to call the cancel changes function. And on apply changes, we want to call the apply changes function. Okay. So I'll just uh, turn off the pause screen. Just going to save it before we play. And then we'll hit play. And now if I pause the game, we have our options menu. We'll go into our options. Oh, we haven't assigned our objects I just realized so we'll go to where our menu controller script is and we need to slot our options screen into there and now we can press play again we have our ball bouncing and we open the options we get to our options screen which obviously at the moment is very empty but if we hit apply changes we go back and if we hit cancel changes we also go back so perfect that's basically what we need our options menu to do one other little thing we should probably actually do as well is if we turn on back here instead of saying paused up here We'll just have this say options just so people know uh, kind of intuitively where they are in the hierarchy of things um, so for now that's fine we have the basics of our options menu set up so that shows how you can switch in between different menus so you could have a variety of different menus options for example what we're going with here is the idea of having a single options menu which will have uh, video options and sound options for example in here all together but if you wanted to have go back to our pause screen if you wanted to have a specific display options button an audio options button maybe you want to have a, a screen for managing saves in your game or anything like that that's the most simple and straightforward way to do it just easily switch between them just like that so that's all fine and dandy we're happy with that uh, in the next video, as I, as I said, we'll look at actually uh, adding some stuff to our little options menu. Uh, but before we go any further, we want to make sure that this menu that we have can actually be reconfigured for different screens. So at the moment, if I switch this to, say, 1280 by 720, oh, we get all zoomed in on the screen. You can see in our game view here, everything's kind of getting bigger and weird. If we were to just change the angle to just 16 by 9 we get this whole weird thing going on if we change these things around as you can see you're ending up with big massive buttons and elements of your UI getting pushed off the screen uh, I'm just gonna go back to my default setting that I have so the problem with it is just how unity handles uh, UI in general can be a little bit weird and a little bit strange um, at the moment so we have our pause menu here the way this is aligned is it's we we have our main big block here taking up the full size of the screen to uh, cover everything behind it as we want it to do we have our text here by default it will be aligned to the center so basically it works out how far away am i from the center object okay if we change views i'm going to say this i'm, I'm going to stay the same distance away from that center object so if i change a view here 
you can see in our scene view it stays the same distance away from the center but effectively in that our game view here that really messes things around and you can see we end up with these things being blown out really big like that so if for example we were to change this so that our pause menu was anchored to the top so it goes by the distance from the top so our top distance is that's relatively close so if we change view again we still get this weird situation happening and the reason that happens is because it's a child of this black background so you you might look at that and go oh no this is going to be really awkward am i going to have to reconfigure this to get rid of my background so it doesn't stretch and all this kind of other stuff which obviously is just making more problems for you than is really worth it but what we can do instead is if we go to the canvas that all these UI elements are built on and if we go over to instead of UI scale mode being constant pixel size which is the default setting that we have if we switch this to scale with screen size and we pick a default re reference resolution so for example I'm going to pick the kind of most standard resolution that is used on monitors these days which is 1920 by 1080 so that's your normal full HD screen that's your standard HD screen that most um, most people use in general these days uh, so what that will do is it'll say okay everything that we build here is in reference to that so now if we change the size of this stuff oh that that, <laughs> that made a very tall window um, that's a very bad example but if we change them in all of these different places here you can see we get it scaling in different ways now we're not getting our pause screen oh for some reason our pause screen should be set to stretch like this so if I put this back to oh I shouldn't have done that hold on we leave it centered I'll go back to my 1920 there we go so we're at default resolution so basically you want to make sure that in a particular resolution everything works the way you want it to then on this pause screen I need to set this to stretch here so that it'll stretch based on how it's set up right now if we switch to a different view for example 16 by 10 now you'll see th that the um, the background black image will scale in differently with all of them so if I go back to this 720 super tall one now you'll see it covers the whole screen and our pause menu gets moved up to the top because we set it to be relative to the top element and obviously if you're going to build your phone for your your game or whatever for, for mobile you would design around that and you'd be using a view like this but as our default setup is a more traditional uh, wide angle if we stick to using those wide angles or even a square angle of some kind like a, a 4 to 3 resolution our UI elements will still make sense and will still fit in so it's a it's a handy little thing to do is make sure that on your canvas you have this set to sc scale with screen size and then a specific reference resolution because otherwise you'll end up with your UI elements floating around all over the place and the same holds true for doing any kind of HUD mechanics or anything like that like having a health bar in the corner of your screen if you do this you'll make sure that your health bar stays the same size on your screen relatively speaking and will fit in nicely with your game so we've now got an options menu that we can open and we've got a way to make sure that our UI all fits in nicely so in the next game essentials video we'll look at how to make sure that we can have some options that actually do something